everybody, it's Joe Power on Howard from Extreme Sequences, bringing you another Monday Minutes. Why do some people's sequences absolutely suck after they've mapped something from a, an, another person's sequence? You do all the mapping, you match this to that, and then you realize it just doesn't look like the sequencers. It doesn't look like the original source and you feel a little duped and you, you reach out and you're like, what did I do wrong? What did I do wrong? And they're like, oh, send me your layout and I'll help you and I'll fix it up for you. And I am finding out, or I've just known all these years that as, as we progress with bigger props, more submodels, more styles of the way people use submodels and submodel groups, that it can be very difficult for you. And I don't blame you for being a little frustrated. If you're going to spend some coin on a sequence and you put it on your show and it just looks like dog poo, well, I think you have a right to be a little upset. So I'm going to show you three steps to ensure that you are setting the foundation of your show to be successful when mapping in other people's sequences. And it's not that hard. And I hope that maybe the developers might take a look at it and say, great, maybe we can get those three steps down to two. Maybe we can get those three steps down to one. Uh, the developers have done a great job. Let's keep pushing the envelope. It's an amazing time to be in this hobby. Okay, so let's get started. But before we begin, please smash that thumbs up. I really appreciate it. It helps the channel. And subscribe to the channel. That really, really makes a huge difference. All right, let's get going. I have a layout here that we're going to be working with. And some of these models look familiar. These are the Gilbert Engineering models that you've seen over the years. There's the Rosa Grande, the original Rosa wreath, named after my wife, of course. The Grand Illusions, left and right top. In the center top is Square Peg. Uh, we have a couple of uh, GE Odysseys, left and right center, and then the bottom centers are the GE Fusions. Then we have a couple of flakes, the A flake, left, right, and then the center flake is the I flake. And because of things that have changed in X lights, I've made changes to submodels, and I bet other sequencers either have or will make changes to their submodel groups as they uh, progress through their artistry. And so for me, this has been a great fun experience making these changes and seeing how lively I can make my sequences and how unique I can make them. But let's say that you've had these models for a few years, or let's say that three years ago you you picked up the Rosa Grande and you had to take a year or two off and you've come back to the hobby and, and you're wondering why sequences may not look right. Uh, what the heck did this sequencer do? I don't even recognize these submodels or these submodel groups. Okay, well, that's one part. So number one, we may have uh, a variance or discrepancy between submodels and submodel groups from a previous uh, model to something that's been modified. Okay. Uh, the second part of this is you may have some sequencers that have done their own thing with these models, creating sub models. Maybe they do things a certain way. So you're left scratching your head like, well, how, how, how do I, how can I import sequences from XYZ vendor and ZZZ vendor and BBB's vendor and make all this world work for me in sequencing just for the mapping? I just want my show to look good. Okay. So the first step is getting the sub models in the correct uh, way they should be based on where you're getting your sequences. Okay. Uh, the second thing is, um, is the groups. If we look at my original show here, this is my home. If we look at the fusion, for example, the fusion has arrows, balls, feathers, this, 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 this. Then it's got freaky. And then it's got freaky group model. What the heck's model all about? Well, for me, that's just a way of signifying that this sub-model group is uh, or the sub model is basically a group that's contained. In other words, all the spokes or arms or arrows are all in that uh, one section, like these rows. Okay, that's one way you can create a sub model, uh, and that's put in a group. And then the other might be the individuals. Okay, where you have arm one, arm two, arm three, arm four, arm five, and so on and so on. 
and those are put in submodel groups. So if we look at the difference here, here's my freaky uh, group model. Since I have two models for the fusion, you can see that these submodels consist of freaky one and freaky two. Okay, whereas the way I've always done it from the beginning, and what I feel is the recommended way to do this, this is just my opinion, is the individual arms, freaky one, two, three, four, five, six, and then freaky two, arm one through six, and those go in a group. Those seem to give me the best results and don't get me in trouble by future-proofing my sequences. At least that's the hope. But the, the, the whole purpose of talking about these submodel groups here, these are submodel groups that I created after the fact. I mean, this model wasn't born with these. I put these in just this year, which doesn't mean anything to your previous sequences unless I modify or update them, which in which case you can leave it alone as is, or you can update to something that looks, I think, better. Okay, for my new sequences, you're going to want these submodels. Okay, and this may go for any other sequencer that's selling you sequences. If they update theirs, you're going to want their version. Okay, so we talked about the submodel. Got to get that in. Got to get it uh, uh, fixed up to where it matches the original models and submodels and submodel groups. And then there has to be the submodel groups themselves. How are you going to create those? You're going to right click. You know, you're going to create a new group. You're going to drag and drop. No, nope. you're going to arrow over. Yeah, if you want to go back to 2018, you can. But I'm going to show you a better way. So part two is creating the submodel groups. And it's super easy. Okay. Then there's the last part of this. Let me go back to the new world. In the new world, after you have updated your models, and then you have created the submodel groups. That's great. Now it's time to start mapping. Well, what happens when you map? Well, let's take a look at something. Let's just create a new animation. This hierarchy, this view here in the edit display elements is very, very critical. Okay, if I look at my edit display elements, you'll see that I have a class view, copycat sequences, extreme sequences view. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get rid of uh, this because that was just playing with something. I'm going to get rid of this. And so basically we have a master view and we have an extreme sequences view. So in your world, if you're getting sequences from me, you may already have this. And so this has a hierarchy, all pixels, mega tree, all this, and then these groups. This order right here is so important, the Rosa Grande group. The reason I put a single Rosa Grande in a group is because you may have more than one Rosa Grande group. So if I'm sequencing at the group level and you apply that to your group level and you have five or nine of the Rosa Grandes, they're all going to get effects appropriately, okay? But the order of this really defines what the end result is going to be for your sequence when you map, okay? So I'm gonna get out of here. Uh, well, before I get out of here, uh, here's the challenge. How do we get the new submodels that you have now put in the new submodel groups that match the sequencer that you're going to be mapping from? How do we get them in here? And how do we ensure they're in the right order? I'm going to show you. All right, let's get going. Let's get going. All right, I don't have to do anything else. I'll go to my layout. I'll click save. Okay, first up is you're going to need the correct models. So let's just look at this fusion. Okay, how can we ensure we get the correct model to work from? Well, if you have my sequences, you can just export it from here. You can go to X-Lights or you can go to that vendor. In this case, uh, Gilbert Engineering has their own uh, models that you can download from their website. That's fairly new. You can get it from there. Uh, but I guess if you want to ensure that you're getting the one from the sequencer, maybe the sequencer, but they really should be the same. The X-Lights, the sequencer for mine, and what you would get from Gilbert Engineering should be the same model. And if it's not, let me know. All right, but this is a quick way. What I'll do here is right click and I will export the X-Lights model. 
And what's nice about doing it this way is it's going to bring up a window and you can tell it where you want it to go, save it to the desktop, and then you're going to get this screen here, which you've seen in past um, tutorials, and you get to choose everything you want. So if I just click select all, but I don't want all pixels and I don't want any of this stuff. I really just want the, um, well, I just sort of want everything. I want everything that I'm going to use. And I click OK and it puts it on the desktop. So that's pretty easy. You only need to do this for each model type. In other words, if I have four eye flakes, I only need one eye flake. If I have two fusions, I only need one fusion. Same thing with all the other models. Okay. And you'll see what I have done in the interest of time is I have created in this Monday Minutes folder, I've already created update models, updated models right here. So we'll have, we have the AI, uh, the Fusion, Rosa Grande, Space Odyssey, and Squared. So those are done. Okay, fair enough. So we don't need that. And what we can do is begin the process. And here we go. And I'm just going to start at the top. I'm going to look at the Rosa Grande and think to myself, is it missing anything? Well, it is because there is a brand new, just one, just one, called Superfly is a submodel that I built for this. And if we look over here in the Rosa Grande, you're going to see on the left side here that Superfly does not exist. It'd be right here between spoke and torch because it's alphabetical. Everything over here is always in alphabetical order. Um, doesn't exist. So I need to get that into this model. Now, yes, I could import it or I could bring it in from the X lights heaven and I could put it over here and then I could right click and I could replace this model with this model. I could do that. That's another way. Yes, that works. And that keeps all your channel count and output and all that stuff intact. But I want to show you this other way. And it's as simple as going to your sub models. Uh, you scroll down here on the left side. And we would click on submodels. Now, this is this could be a little tricky. Don't hit that aliases because uh, submodels used to be where the aliases is. So just make sure you're careful. You click submodels. And what we want to do here is import from a model or a file. Now, if I had brought something down from X Lights Heaven onto my desktop or into my seek or the layout, or I imported it, I would import from that model. That's one way. What I'm going to do is import from a file. When I do this, it's going to ask me, hey, man, where is your file? Well, I'm so glad you asked. That is in my Monday Minutes show directory and in a folder called Updated Models. And it's the Rosa Grande model. And I'm going to click Open. And we're going to see here we have a window that has a whole bunch of stuff going on. This is asking me, which submodels do I want to import? Well, I don't really want to import all of these. Now, if I imported all of them again, no fuss, no muss, it just replaces them. Here's the challenge. And why you want to be careful doing this. What if you made changes to this model? What if you created your own submodels or you had to flip some things around? I'd probably not mess with importing everything in. Okay, so what I would do is I'd right click and I would deselect all and then I would go find the new sub model or sub models that you want to bring over into it. And they're usually going to be at the very bottom because this likes to put them in the order that they were created, not alphabetically. Uh, it would be interesting if there was a way to sort this by uh, alphabetical or date created, but I think this sort of just does it by date created. As you can see here, I have a torch long test, so I'm going to ignore that. What I am going to do is click this Superfly, which is the main submodel, and then I'm going to select all of these, which are the splits, which are the components of that submodel that I put in a group, and that's what I sequence to. So I'm just going to select each one of these. There we go. Simple, simple, simple. And click OK. And that's pretty much it. And click OK. 
and I click save. Now I can look at the sub models again if I want just to verify that they're, they're going to be at the bottom that they are. They're in the model now. Fantastic. Okay. So let's cancel out of that. Yes. Now, did it create a sub model group called GE Rosa Grande Superfly? Uh, I bet you didn't. Wouldn't it be nice if it did? But it didn't. So I'm going to go up here. I'm going to go find my Rosa Grande, and I'm going to just, 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 just check. Just make sure. Superfly? No, no, it's not there. It's not there. But I'm going to show you in the step two how to get them there. Okay. But first, we're going to do some quick work with updating some of these models that need to be updated. So follow along, and if this is uh, if this runs too slow for you, just put me on high speed. All right, so I'm going to go left to right. Uh, nothing with the Grand Illusion. Didn't add anything. So again, repetition is a great tool. I'm going to go to my submodels. I'm going to click import. I'm going to import from a file. I'm going to go to the Space Odyssey. I'm going to click open. And in this one here, you can see these are the ones I really want. I am Brad, Jason Walks, and I don't feel so good. Those are the ones I would want. Now, I know I haven't made any changes to any of the others, so I'm just going to click OK to bring them all over, and we're fine. And you'll see over here on the left, here's my new one. I am Brad, Jason Walks, I don't feel so good. Click OK. OK, click Save. Then I'm going to go to the other one. I'm going to do the same thing. Submodels. Import. File. Same model, Space Odyssey. And I'm just going to click them all. Click OK. They're now in the group. Click OK. Save. OK. Uh, we did the Rosa Grande. This one, believe it or not, uh, I must have been playing around with this because this one already has it. So I'm not going to worry about uh, Square Peg because it has all the models. And it also has all the newer groups. So that's kind of a cool thing. That'll save us a little bit of time. Let's go to the next one. Let's go to this high density prop. This is the Fusion. We'll go down here. We'll go to our submodels. And we will import from a file. Same folder. This time we are looking for the Fusion. Click open. Uh, let's just bring everything in. In the interest of time. Done. OK. Save. Fusion number two. Uh, Submodels, import, file, fusion, open that up, say OK. They're all in there. Click OK, save. Why am I clicking save each and every time? Uh, because I don't want to lose any work. <laughs> and it takes but just a moment. Uh, here's my A Flake. So, what's new in the A Flake? A Flake received a new submodel group this year, submodel and group called Leafs, L E A F. S. And so I like how they look. So I'm going to go ahead and go over here and ensure I have them. You can see here I have no leaves. So if I import, import from file, this will be the A flake. Click open and OK. And now we have our leaf group. Boom. Beautiful. And then let's do this one. Submodel, import, file. A flake, and there we go. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Click OK, save that. And our last one is the I flake, one of my favorites. Uh, we're going to bring in from the file. That is going to be the I flake. That's this guy right here. Click OK, OK, save. And now step one is complete. We have gone through each of these models and updated them to have the latest and greatest sub models. Okay, which is great. But again, we didn't get any of the groups. If we go up here, we go to our flakes section, we have arms, groups, outlines, and spokes. I need one called leafs. It's very, very important. So, this is a really cool way for you to quickly get in all of these sub model groups. And all you need is that sequencer's RGB effects file. That's from their show directory. So if you typically import from zip files, which you should when you're mapping, uh, if you take one of their sequences, one of the newest sequences that may have the changes, go ahead and unzip that so you have the folder, you can get to the show directory. All you're going to have to do 
is right click on your desktop. Make sure you deselect, right click, and we are going to import previews models groups. Import previews models groups. When you do this, we need to navigate to the show directory of the original sequencer. In my case, that's Christmas 2024, and we scroll down here, and what we are looking for, let me click on the name here, we are looking for the RGB effects file. That's this puppy right here. Every show directory gets one. And because this is my Christmas 2024 folder, this will have all of the updated model, submodels, and submodel groups. If I click open, this is gonna open up a familiar window that gives us choices. And what we're looking to do here is only select the new submodel groups that we want that we don't have. So we're gonna go down the list here, and we know in the flakes, we have a flakes leaf group, so I'm gonna bring that in. Uh, we don't have the click, click, boom in this, so I'm gonna to go to the fusion. What's new in the fusion? Well, we have the freaky, and now we also have the freaky group model. Remember, this is the one where it's not the splits. It's just the whole submodel consists of those rows as one submodel that can be put in a group or sequence at the submodel level, although it's not really recommended. That's certainly what the devs have said for quite a while. So I'm, I'm going to ignore that. If you get sequences from a sequencer that does use that, then certainly put that in there. I don't need the main group. Uh, lantern group is new. Pretty Flake group is new. Uh, spaz group is new. And I know there's one more. All right, Wishful group. And if you miss one, you can always go back and get it. Okay, let's go on down the list. Nothing from the Grand Illusion. I don't have a King's Ransom in there. The Rosa Grande. Remember there was one? It was the Superfly group. Fantastic. We don't have the Shapeshifter in there, and here comes the Odyssey. The Odyssey, we had a couple or few in there, and that was the I Am Brad, a Don't Feel So Good, and Jason Walks. And <clears throat> then we come to the uh, GE Squared. Now, if you inadvertently... Uh, created one that's already in there. I'll do fizzle my dizzle. <laughs> yeah, lovely name. Uh, I'll put that in anyway. All it's going to do is override it. So you're not going to hurt anything if you inadvertently add the same that's already existing. All right. And then I think we're done. Okay. So before I click OK and have this automatically delicious creation of submodel groups, I want you to also know that if you're starting out fresh and you haven't even put models on your home, but you want to model your home after a specific sequencer, you can also bring over these groups and the main original model. And all you'd have to do is come down here, for instance, the Rosa Grande, you would want to make sure that you bring in the Rosa Grande, which will be all on its own here in alphabetical order, wherever you are. Yeah, you would just select this. By doing this, you're gonna bring in the model, the submodels, and the model groups and submodel groups. That's pretty cool. All right, so I'm not gonna do that at this point because they're already on the layout. And I'm gonna click OK. And if you saw this, if you weren't looking, this did a nice little blink. And now what you can see here is that here's our Flakes Leaf group. Here's our Fusion Lantern, Pretty Flake, uh, Spaz. And you notice that it just puts this in order. So this order has serves no purpose for what we're going to be doing in the sequencing world. Because that is now going to take us to step three. Probably one of the most important steps. So we have created the submodel. Uh, we have updated the models. We have created the submodel groups automatically by right-clicking and importing them from the original sequencer show directory. Fantastic. Now it's time to ensure that we get these, these uh, models, submodels, submodel groups into a hierarchy for the purpose of mapping. 
So what we need to do is go to our sequencer. You need to have an animation sequence open. You don't need any music for this. So just, just click on new, discard changes. If you have something, click on animation. Don't care about the frames. And this is going to bring you up in this. You may see master view. Okay. What you're going to want to do is click edit display elements. And if all you have is a master view, then you want to, you could sort it from here, but chances are, if you've been paying attention to my training tutorials, that you already have some other view, whether it's called sequence view or the your favorite vendor's view, something other than master. This view here is designed to put these in a hierarchy that you would tell X lights to make master. And so every time you create a new sequence for the purpose of mapping or just create a sequence, it would always keep the hierarchy as you see it here. But if we look to our left, we will see that we have all of these new sub model groups, uh, tinkle sprinkle. Uh, I don't feel so good. I am Brad. Jason walks. We have all these sub model groups over here. They don't belong to the master view. They don't, I mean, well, actually they do go into the master view, but they are not going to be in order. What we can do is bring in these sub model groups and model groups, just say groups over to this side and put them in order automatically. Okay. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to click import. We're going to be creating a third view here. And I want you to think about this. Let's say that you have four or five vendors you purchase sequences from. There's probably a good chance you should have four or five views named after those vendors. So that when you're mapping from them, you're using their view to ensure you're getting the hierarchy of the way they sequence across to your show. This is where I see people really missing out on this. This is where I'll look at some things. I'm like, ah, something doesn't look right like that. And I might go look at the original sequencer stuff and go, yeah, they did that. This is nothing like that. Even worse, I'll see my work on someone's layout and their show and they put it on YouTube or they're playing it live. And I'm like, maybe they're taking creative liberties with my work. And that's cool. I dig that, but it doesn't look right at all. I don't want to say it looks like a hot mess because the people watching, they don't care. They're just like, Ooh, wow. Lights and music together. That is amazing. But as the creator of the sequence, you kind of go, wow, you know, maybe they just missed something. And I think a lot of it has to do with the submodels, models, the orders, the groups, and certainly the hierarchy of these groups. Okay. So part of the third step, here we go, is we're going to import yet again. This is the third time we're importing. The first time we imported uh, submodels to update models. The second time we imported groups to create groups for the new submodels. Now we are going to import from a layout file or a sequence. So this is kind of interesting. You can take a master view from a sequence. So let's say that I had a sequence I did, uh, you know, somewhere between January and June. And then Something happened crazy in July and I decided to do things differently, which I'm not going to do. <laughs> but let's say I did. You may want to uh, take the changes from that sequence that suddenly did something very, very, very different to make it right. But anyway, we're going to stick to um, what's logically sensible here and take this from a layout file, which would be the RGB effects file from a show directory. So again, we're back in my Christmas 2024. We're going to go here again, and we're going to steal some automatically delicious features from X lights. And so here we go, we're going to click open. And right now you'll see I have main sequence view, you may see other views in there. So don't grab the wrong view. You know, let's say that you already have something from another sequencer, maybe you don't want to do that. Uh, grab this view and click OK. It was that easy. It was that. Did you see what happened? Do I need to start all over? Look here. We'll go from the top. This is now called uh, main sequence view because we imported it. 
And in that main sequence view, all pixels are at the top, tree topper, mega tree, eaves, blah, 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 all the way down. And then what's really important here is that the hierarchy of the Rosa Grande, it puts the superfly group where it's supposed to be. Let's go over here to fusion, fusion group. And then it starts with pretty flake, wishful, lantern, spaz, freaky, spoke, so on and so on. Okay. It's very, very important. If you need to make changes, you can drag things around, you can pull them up top, you can arrow them up and top, you can bring stuff from the left to the right, no problem. But this is the fastest way to bring the groups over and put them in the correct hierarchy based on your sequencer. So if you're happy with that, then you might take this and rename it. So if this is from Extreme Sequences, you can just say Extreme Layout Show. You know, I've got another one on there, but at least you can call this anything you like. And then tell that that becomes, you know, the master. Extreme layout show, make master. And we can close out of this. There we go. Go to my layout. Always hit save. And so if I was ready to import a new sequence, I can cl click new. I don't need those changes. I want to do a musical sequence. I am going to go to my desktop. I'm going to go to the Monday Minutes. And I'm going to go to other people sequences. Here's extreme sequences. Here's the song I want to do. 40 frames. And right here. Which view are you going to use? Well, I want to use the one from the extreme layout. And I'm going to click done. Because now... All that work we did just paid off. There's my all pixels group. Here's my leaf group, arms. We come down here. All of this is going to be in order. Uh, all of the Rosa Grande is going to be in order. All of the Fuge Odyssey is going to be in order with the I am Brad, Jason Walks. I don't feel so good. And then the Fusion. All of that's going to be in order. Now, I feel pretty good about importing. Import effects. This is going to be the sequence and this has got a lot of video work in it and because i'm sort of mapping for myself to myself i know all my stuff is going to be the same names auto map there it goes click ok and it brings everything in and i'm pretty much done all of the orders are going to be correct which means all of the effects are going to be correct and from here you take it upon yourself to go crazy and make it unique, yours, different, whatever you want to do. I hope this has been beneficial. I really want your shows to be the best they can be. And I, I do want to make it as easy as possible for you folks who put in all the effort in your shows. Let's face it, uh, you're poking your own pixels and you're mounting them to your homes and, and having to build things. And the last thing you want to do is get bogged down with spending extra time mapping sequences that can be easier no matter where you get them from. At least that's my hope. All right. That's all I've got for you this week. I know it's been quite a bit. Uh, be sure and go back and review some of it. Again, smash that thumbs up. Consider subscribing to the channel, and we will catch you next week. I'm Ron. This has been Monday Minutes. See ya.